A couple weeks ago, I taught some of the middle school staff how to make a Google form into a collection point for their daily writing prompts that they'll be looking at doing next year. Now with that in mind, we can use the same general idea to create a Google form that can collect any sort of data that we have each day, whether it's a what did you learn from today's lesson, a quick start to get them going in the morning, or in this case, a daily writing prompt. Now just to go over how you would uh, create a Google form if you're not already familiar, familiar with how to do so. You'll click on create and then go to form. Once you create a new form, you're going to get a prompt that shows up in the first window that is going to give you the ability to title your form, which is a very good habit to get into, as well as to choose a theme for the form. Although the theme can be set later, so I would not focus on the theme at this point in time. I'll just do a demonstration form number two, and then click OK. Then from here, you have the option to choose from nine different question types. You also have the ability to insert four different layout uh, types from this menu as well as the nine different question types. Now, the first question that you may want to ask your students is what the date is, because it will make your data a lot easier to manage later on. So we can just click and drag the questions around. Once you've added in your two questions for today's date and for the block, then you can determine what the other content is that you'd like to ask them. It could be, for example, what was today's prompt? Or you could ask what was one thing that you learned today or what was one thing that you had a question about today? Then you could add in a paragraph text for your response. Make that a required question as well. Okay, so there we have our four questions. We're going to give them a nice friendly message. I don't want them to be able to easily fill out another one. And then you can give them the ability to edit responses after they've submitted. Now this can be good no matter what grade level they're at because that way they can go in and correct any spelling mistakes that they can see as soon as they submit it. But for the middle school students, they won't be able to receive a copy of their, their submission through their email because it's emailed to them from an outside address. But if they are at the high school level, then they will receive an email from at google.org um, or at google.com. So they'll be able to edit their response from there. Just keep that in mind. You won't actually be able to send a copy of this to the students very easily uh, unless you're using a script or add-on. Then we can view our live form. So this is the basic general idea. We could then link to it using this link here, or we could embed it in our web page. And if you need help with either of those, then you can certainly let me know. You can then also click on View Responses, and that will take you to a spreadsheet where your responses are stored. Now, for the sake of argument, I'm going to fill in a form and then zoom ahead so we can see the response. Once the submission has been uh, put in, then you can see that here I can get, an act, get a link to edit my response. I also get a confirmation saying that my response has been submitted. So clicking on the edit gives me this page where I can come back in and edit this previous response. I could also bookmark this URL if I wanted the students to be able to come back in and edit this page again and again. But keep in mind that this URL is specific to this one entry. It's not in general. All the responses are then recorded in a spreadsheet like such. And you see that the, there are five different um, columns across the top with information, the first one being a timestamp that records when the submission was actually um, done and what time. The first step that I do recommend doing in terms of managing your data is turning on the filter aspect. And the filters will allow you to filter your data down to just one block a day to filter it in addition to what day it is what today's writing prompt was, as well as today's response. Now you'll notice that I do not have anywhere on here that actually records who the student was in general. You can do that pretty easily if you click off at the top to automatically collect the respondent's MSAD6 username. Uh, that will give you their email address, which makes it easy to understand. Um, or you can also provide another field within your form that they would give you their first and last name. You'll notice that an additional column has now shown up on the right hand side because I have checked off the username column. 
And because I only just checked it off, it does show up at the end. I'll turn off filters and turn them back on in order to encompass that last column. And then I do have the ability to, again, sort by the username, the block, the date. Now, why is this cool? Because if you keep on using the same forum all year long, then all of your responses are in one place, which makes it easy to see over the course of time how, for example, one student has done, because we can sort the timestamp submissions by A to Z. So that way we could have one kid, filter just for one kid, sorted by timestamp, and then you can actually see the progression for the student in terms of their writing skills over the course of the year. It also gives you only two documents because in the end you have demo form two and demo form two responses in your Google Drive as opposed to you know, 47 different um, Google documents from every day from the kids sharing their responses with you. So as you can tell, it's pretty easy to do. If you need help getting it set up or would like me to help you get it linked onto your website or even embedded, then just let me know.